Every year, thousands of tourists pass this sign on the road to Phillip Island, southeast of Melbourne. Behind the high security fencing is Australia's most comprehensive automotive testing site, the Holden Proving Ground at Lang Lang. The centrepiece is a 4.7 kilometre banked circular track. The incline of the four lane speed bowl varies from flat to flat out. In 1992, Holden contracted the PRS to resurface the entire track. PRS took up the challenge and developed special equipment and techniques to cope with the banked parabolic cross section. After 11 years of punishment, Pioneer was recalled in 2003 to resurface the high speed lane and carry out limited patching in other lanes. Following an extensive engineering survey, the lanes were closed and PRS moved in. The first stage is profiling of failed sections by removing the existing asphalt to a uniform depth and width. The profiler cuts a channel exactly one meter wide and 90 millimeters deep. The excavated asphalt is dumped around the site for future recycling on access roads. The profiler carries outrigger wheels to ensure its stability on the steep banking. The operator can vary the outrigger angle to ensure uniformity of the profile depth. The operator's seat is leveled to reduce fatigue and ensure safe operation. A mechanical broom continuously sweeps the area, removing loose asphalt and spreading it on the road verge. The area must be profiled to a width of two meters, necessitating a second parallel cut. Each cut must be straight and true. There is no allowance for overlap. A mechanical broom collects any loose asphalt that gathers in the lower edge of the cut. Meanwhile, a few hundred meters behind the profiling, the asphalting team is at work. Conventional road making equipment was again modified to compensate for the bank. The heart of the asphalting process is a paver that places hot asphalt into the profile channel to the required line and level. This paver is stabilized by being linked to a lower paver that does not place asphalt, but acts as a transfer station. Again, the operator's seat has been angled to compensate, as has the rear screed platform. The paver operator controls both machines from the upper paver. The profiled, clean pavement has been previously sprayed with a tack coat. The paving process then commences with hot asphalt being delivered to the site by a stream of trucks from the PRS Langwarren plant. The truck backs up to a shuttle buggy. A materials transfer vehicle, essentially a 25 ton hopper on wheels, and tips its load into the buggy's cavernous belly. The shuttle buggy remixes the asphalt to a uniform mix and consistent temperature. Its operator controls the flow of asphalt to a small hopper on the lower paver. It's then conveyed into the main paver hopper and placed continuously in the profiled channel, all without stopping, even to take on asphalt. The truck driver, shuttle buggy operator and paver operator must synchronize their pace perfectly. This is critical as paver speed variations can adversely impact on the rideability of the completed surface. The depth of the cut, 90 millimeters, and the size of the asphalt mix to be placed determine the number of layers needed to achieve the required compaction. In this case, the asphalt was placed in two layers. Following the second layer, team members bustle around the back of the paver working rakes along the edges of the fresh asphalt, removing high spots and filling small depressions in the mat. The next stage is compaction of the placed asphalt. 
A steel drum roller makes multiple passes over the asphalt mat to complete the first part of the compaction process. However, this is no ordinary roller. The steel drums have been machined to a convex shape matching that of the embankment. The edges are given special attention to ensure proper compaction is achieved. Because of the incline, the roller's vibration function was not used. An attitude system comprising a wheel on either side of the drum was fitted to ensure the drum sits correctly. The second stage of compaction utilizes a multi-wheeled roller, also modified to compensate for the concave surface. The central tyres are slightly larger diameter than the outer tyres. Backing up these operations is a tractor-mounted mechanical broom that sweeps up any loose material, ready for Holden to resume using the lower lanes once paving operations have ceased for the day. Lagging behind this busy work face is a solitary worker. His job is to test asphalt compaction at frequent intervals across the newly paved area. A surface moisture density gauge is placed on a thin bed of sand and left for a few minutes to take a measurement. The five kilometers of resurfacing was completed in just 18 days, including several wet days, allowing test vehicles to safely return to the high-speed lane. Holden carried out their own rideability tests before and after to ensure their satisfaction with the finished project. In all, the Pioneer team placed approximately 2,000 tonnes of asphalt under the most demanding conditions. The Lang Lang project was delivered on time and on budget, with a finished product that exceeded the client's expectations, not just met them. Pioneer Road Services is pleased to play its part in maintaining Holden's made-for-Australian conditions philosophy.